I'd like to call upon Brother Daylight to come and give us the scripture reading. Happy Sabbath, Church. Our scripture reading for today is found in Proverbs 30, verse 5. And it says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Good morning and happy Sabbath, Church. Thank you very much. Uh, it is my privilege to be here. Um, I would want to thank Ina for leading the processions. And I would also want to thank Suzanne for the, co the good uh, children's story. It is always pleasing to know that when we walk and whether we walk in daylight or we walk in darkness we have someone who is always with us the little girl when she was going to see her father she wasn't worried what was going to happen because jesus was walking around with her so we are all blessed because we have got jesus who is with us on a daily basis and I would also want to thank the musicians. We, we, we had Nkosi, we had Amanda and uh, Nyasha, and then we had uh, Sister Blanche on the organ, and uh, Sister Matilda, all the way from Karatha. Right, Sister Matilda and the husband there, Craig, they were members of this church some few years ago, and Craig was the Sabbath school superintendent, and we had a good time during his time when he was leading. And for those of you who were not able to come in on time for Sabbath school today, I'm going to say to you, very sorry, you missed a lot. There's one thing about uh, Sabbath school. People, Sabbath school starts at 9.20, in the morning and when it's 9 20 that flight to heaven takes off so if you're not in to bed you are left behind there was a lot of good singing the one song i remember that was sung which i enjoyed very much was the one that i surrender all why i enjoyed that song is it reminds me of my uh, young age when i was a young boy going to church we used to sing that song every time when it was offering time. So once I hear I surrender all to me, it's actually offering time. So when they sang that song, I was almost searching my pocket as if it was offering time. Thank you very much. So let's, let's take note, Sabbath school starts at 7.30 and let's be in on time. Oh, did I say 7.30? That, that will be good for you guys to be here at 7 30. Blessings come in the morning. Sabbath school starts at 9 20. 9 20 on Sabbath. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you, Daylight, for reading our um, scripture for today. And uh, like uh, the, the Daylight said, it comes from the book of Proverbs. And it's Proverbs 30, verse 5. In the NIV, it says, every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. So for all those who take refuge in Jesus Christ, you will not go wrong. And the title of our sermon for today is, no place is more secure than to be in God's hands. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Our Father in heaven, at this hour, Lord, 
if there's anything we need, it's your presence. Lord, we ask you to be with each and every one of us here. As we worship, Lord, I ask you to hide me behind your cross, Lord. The words that I'm going to say, Lord, let them be words that are going to encourage and lead your saints to be closer and nearer to you on each and every day of their lives. So I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. No place is more secure than to be in God's hands. A story was written by um, Andrew McChesney, who is an editor of the Adventist Mission in the USA. And this story was written about a lady who was uh, 31 years old, and uh, she was living in the country of uh, Trinidad and Tobago. And the capital of Trinidad and Tobago is uh, Port of Spain. So this lady lived in the city of Port of Spain. On this particular day, she was at a school helping, directing the training of teachers. So since it was in the afternoon and teachers were supposed to be in there for some training, most of the school children were asked not to come to school, so only a few who had no teachers were not, who were with the teachers were not involved in the training session were allowed to be at the school for that day. So the majority of the school children stayed home for the afternoon. So as the training session went on, uh, these guys, they were enjoying their lesson and the next thing they had, uh, the rattle and tattle of gunfire from outside. And for those that, were, that have been involved or that have been somewhere close to gunfire, you'd know when it sounds, the whole body just goes chill. It's either if you are that person who is not strong enough, you will wet your pants because if it's a semi-automatic rifle, it will be that loud and definitely it will scare you and scare you out of your wits. So for those that were upstairs and we had the courage, the, the chance to look through the window and see where the gunfire was coming and as they looked, they saw a man running on foot and a white car behind her and the gunfire was coming from this car. Uh, the guys were firing and uh, they wanted to, to kill this fella. For what reason, no one knows. So when this guy was running, he, he left uh, his car and went behind one of the cars that was parked in the parking bays and he took shelter from that car, but these guys did not stop shooting, so they continued uh, letting the bullets shower in the direction of where he was. So what happens is uh, when a bullet is coming in and it goes onto a window, there is no way the window is going to survive, so the windows of that car were shattered. Those who were upstairs, some of them who were scared went under the tables to hide and take cover, lest uh, one of the bullets would come and uh, hit you. For the little ones who were downstairs with their teachers, they also scrambled and tried to find cover where they could, and there was silence everywhere throughout the school. And it was a long two minutes as the car drove past because these guys then had lost uh, their man that they wanted because he was hiding behind one of the cars. But the car where he was hidden had already been damaged. 
The owner of this car was a lady by the name Chanel, and Chanel was 31 years old. So when there was a little bit of peace and quietness, the teachers came down and uh, went to try and comfort uh, the children that were downstairs and the other teachers that were down there. And Chanel also came down and when she heard the shrieks and squeaks of the child, school children that were in the classes, she, she, she felt the pain within herself and she wept. The reason why she wept was two reasons. The first reason was she was scared that most probably someone had been killed. The second reason she cried was this wasn't the first time hearing gunfire. So when she was walking past, she saw the teachers comforting the little ones and she walked towards the car park where a car was parked. And when she got there, police officers were there already trying to make sure everything was safe and all good. And uh, the officers were directing the owners of the cars to drive their cars away from the scene of the accident so they could at least uh, talk to the man who was being chased by these gunmen who had already fled and gone. So Chanel came out and wanted to go to a car and one of the police officers stopped and said, no, nah, you can't go to that car and says, why? He says, uh, there's someone who is hiding behind it and it's not safe for you to go there. So he says, oh, no, can, can I please at least see my car? So one of the officers uh, led her to a car and she got close to it and saw the damage that was on the car. The windows were shattered and uh, part of the body and bullet holes through it. But the one good thing, there was no blood. And that man was still lying underneath the car, safe. That same evening, when Chanel got home, she was thinking to herself, what really was taking place? And what really is this that is happening? And when she spoke to her husband, they went to their prayer room and she said this prayer. Thank you, God, for saving me and all the people who were in close proximity to the gunfire. Thanks for your continued protection over my life. This was a prayer that she said that evening. And if we could all, at all times, when we go through difficult times, say such a prayer, it will be something that will change our lives. As she thought, about the attack, she remembered what she was saying two days ago to a fuel attendant as she was as she was waiting for a car to be serviced. She remembered talking to this attendant, and their discussion was about cars. And uh, the discussion went to the effect that at times in life. We, we, we value material things more than we value the Lord who created us. When the car was being serviced, she was asking the guys who were servicing it to put the best of tires on it, to put the best of oil on it. When she fueled the car every time, she would put the best of fuel on it. But at times she realized she was not giving her God the same service. So on the day when she had the gunfire for the second time at school, she remembered 
some seven months ago, she was on the highway and she had gunfire. And during that gunfire, the car that was being targeted by these gunmen came and veered and rammed into a car on the left-hand side and damaged their car. But she was not injured. If most probably that car had rammed on the driver's side, she would have been injured or she would have been killed in the accident. But because the God that we serve cares for us so much, she wasn't injured. Which is why that evening at home, she prayed the prayer that says, thank you God for saving me and all the people who were in close proximity to the gunfire. And God, thanks for your continued protection over my life. And we should at all times thank the Lord for the protection that he gives us in our lives. So we, we value things, we value material things. And what Chanel remembered is what she said to the fuel attendant that most of the time we value property, we value things more than we value the God who created us. In life, it's, it could not be only a car that you value. You could value your spouse and you have to value her or him you can be valuing your children. You can be valuing your relatives. You can be valuing your job. You can be valuing the money that you have accumulated from the work that you do. But there is one thing that we don't have to forget, which we are told in the book of Matthew, in Matthew 6, verse 33, Matthew 6, verse 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. In my life, I was involved in accidents just like what Chanel went through. Sometime I remember in the year 2014, I was working up at the mines and uh, it was a good job, well paying. I was happy there. The reason why I was happy is I was earning good money for what I was doing. But there is one thing that always nagged me then. And what was nagging me was I was enjoying my work and enjoying the remuneration that comes from the work that is out there, the mines, was what we find in the book of Exodus. Exodus 20, verse 8. It says... Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So as much as I enjoyed myself and enjoyed the money that I was getting from my work, it always gave me this hard time that, yes, I'm getting money, but part of the money is money that I'm getting when I've been to work on Sabbath day. So I said to myself then in 2014, I think it was in the month of May, I'm going to leave this job and go and do something else whereby I will remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. So with the little money that I'd raised then, I went on and uh, bought a truck and a trailer. And when I joined the company that I was contracted to then, I openly told them that uh, when it comes to Sabbath, I'm sorry I cannot be found out there working. 
I will take my Sabbath off and be at church. And they were comfortable with it. And uh, the days went on and um, I worked for some time. So like I said, I bought the truck sometime in May and uh, when I resigned from the mine site, it was in October 2014. So for six months, I'd hired a driver who was running around with my truck and trailer. But I'd also asked the driver not to work on Sabbath day. But what was bothering me is, as I was out there before I came down to the mine, I mean, to, to Perth, I was working on Sabbath. So on the 14th of October, 2014, I resigned and came down to Perth. And uh, that was the beginning of uh, a new era in my life in the sense that I now felt peace with myself in the sense that I wasn't working on Sabbath. In the month of April 2019, no, it's in 2018, sorry, in 2018, um, I was involved in an accident. I rolled with my truck and trailer at a roundabout in Baldivis. Uh, when I rolled in that truck, I was carrying sand and the weight of the thing in there was about 30 tons of sand. And when 30 tons goes down, if like it was at a roundabout, fortunately, the God that we serve is a God who shields us. Why I say that is he kept everything away from the vicinity of the accident that I was going to be involved in and where the accident happened. Because if there was any car that was going to be close to where I went down, that car was going to be buried and the driver or whoever was to be in the car would be buried alive. Because you can imagine a heap of sand, 30 tons, just going poof one time. So I rolled the truck and trailer. I managed to come out and skate clean. No damage. But the truck was written off. When the truck was written off, I was seated out there. I, I, I felt the pinch from within. Yes, the truck was written, but my faith wasn't written. Was, wasn't written off but it was shaken. It was shaken. I asked myself, Lord, is this what you called me to come and do? Is this what I'm supposed to be going through? So these were the things that raised in my mind, but what I forgot and what I didn't realize is there was no one who was injured. I, the driver of the truck, was clean, no scratch, no pain anyway. The God we serve is a God who looks after us. No place is more safe than to be in God's hands. Time went on. I got the trailer repaired. I bought another truck. I ran around with it for some two years. I misbehaved when I was running around the truck. I was caught misbehaving in the truck. I lost my license. I had to get someone to drive the truck for me. As the truck was working, in 2019, at 10 a.m., I received a phone call from the driver. And the message was, I've rolled the trailer. And I said to myself, what is this? I quickly jumped on to a taxi and got to the scene of the accident. And my heart was thumping and thumping hard because I didn't know the state of the driver. I didn't know the state of the people close, but the God we serve is a God who protects. No one was injured. The driver was safe and clean. No scratch, nothing. 
but the trailer was written off. The truck survived. My faith was again shaken. But it wasn't written off. I got the trailer away, kept the truck, got that truck hired by someone else, so at least I could continue earning some money. It ran around for some time. In the month of October in 2019, at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, this guy who had hired my truck was on Tonkin Highway, the cruise control in, going at 100 k's an hour, and the car came across at the intersection. What happened there was a miracle in the sense that no one was killed. The car and the truck, when I got there, were so meshed up together. I, I said to myself, King, is, is, are you sure the, the driver of this car is alive? Then I saw her seated somewhere, and her husband was comforting her, and uh, she took her away, and they drove off. You can imagine impact at 100 k's an hour with a loaded truck. But if the Lord is in it, he will protect. I don't know what I would have done if maybe anyone was injured, if maybe the driver of this small car would have died. But the Lord we serve is the Lord who protects. No one was injured. This, when I was reading this story about Chanel, took me back and it strengthened me in the sense that we do not have to focus on material things we do not have to focus much on material things. We need to focus on the Lord. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything will be added unto you. When Chanel got back to the school after the gunfire, there were statements that were said to her by her co-workers. One of them said, sell your car. It is demonic. You said you, 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 you had gunfire in it some seven months ago and it was rammed on by another car and it was damaged. You got it repaired and you're still driving it. Here you are today. Someone went and took refuge underneath it. It is riddled with bullet holes all over. Get rid of it. You know what the reply they got these people from Chanel? The reply from Chanel was, it is not about the car. It is not about the car. We should not put our focus on material things, but we should put our focus on God. And she went on to say, if I could lose my car tomorrow, as long as Christ saves or spares my life, I will keep saving him. There was a lady who had her life rooted in Christ. That 
strengthened me. Like I said, when I had those three accidents, I asked myself, am I strong enough to withstand it? And I'll tell you what, the Lord that I serve is a loving God, is a caring God. No one was injured in all the three accidents. There were potential fatalities. But no one was injured, not even a scratch. So that, to me, is something that always strengthens me and it always makes me feel and know that there is no place that is more secure than to be in God's hands. In, all, in your lives today, you could be going through a difficult time. You could be going through a problematic marriage. You could be going through problems from your children. You could be going through failure to find employment. It could be going through work that is there but not enough to sustain you. But you do not have to forget that. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all shall be added unto you. I thank you. Amen.